three, two, one. Here we go. Welcome to the Remote Photography Podcast. In this episode, I speak with model and photographer Tamarelle Knights about her remote photography experiences. Enjoy the podcast. Hi, Everly. Thanks for doing the podcast. If you could give a brief history of your time in the industry, please. Uh, yeah, so I started in the industry modelling um, nine years ago. I started pretty late on. I was 31. Um, I've modelled, obviously, since then, grown more and more successful each year. And then last year, I seriously started to get into my photography and planning events and things like that. And I am hoping to go into model holidays, model and photographer holidays as well, using my travel industry experience. But all in all, it's been about nine years total. So how did you find out about remote photography? Was it because of the pandemic or was it just something you were naturally looking to do? Uh, yeah, during the pandemic, I was working, I've been a travel agent as well for 20 years. So I was working from home um, for a large retail travel company. And obviously our, our hours were, were slightly less than they would have been normally. So I had a little bit of free time on my hands. And I was invited to a Facebook group by um, a model friend the remote photography group. I had a little look at it um, and I just thought, yeah, you know, this is something, because I've got a camera, but through the modelling and things, I've never really had time to sort of really get into shooting. Mm -hmm. So I decided, yeah, this is something I could actually have a really good go at, get to meet people at the same time. So working from home, not spending money going out, I had a little bit of spare money in the bank. I thought, why not start paying some of the really good models mm -hmm. And doing some remote shoots um and it just took off from there i got the bug and i fell in love with it so out of uh, the shoots how many have you done so far remote shoots must be getting on for about 20. okay and um who have you uh done remote shoots with is it mostly been uh, models in the uk or has it been some overseas so i've done three overseas shoots um one was with Stephanie uh, in Cyprus, one was in Norway with Mishka and one was in New Zealand with Lucy and the rest were UK based. And um, how, did, were, was it more the UK based ones you shot first or was it like say for example Lucy or Stephanie that um, you, you, you first? Stephanie was one of my first um, shoots um, then I did quite a few UK ones. Mm -hmm. Lucy was in the middle and Mishka was towards the end. Okay. Yeah, it just sort of fell that way as, as I was booking them in, really. Yeah. The, some of the girls didn't have availability for quite a long time. With Lucy, obviously, there was a massive time Some difference. difference. Yes, yeah. yeah, so that was quite um, tricky to work around. But we ended up shooting pretty late my time, very early mm. her time, to get the sort of morning the, light. And that yeah, that beautiful. New Zealand sunlight she, she was raves about, yeah. Oh, it's stunning. Absolutely stunning. But yeah, that was a really, really interesting shoot. And yeah. it was quite surreal talking to someone like live on the other side of the world. But yeah, it was it was just a great experience. So did you, because you said you had a camera, did you like had a passing interest in photography? Or was it something like you were thinking to do? But obviously, as we mentioned before, with the pandemic, you just thought, well, OK, I, I know how to work a camera now. I'm just using it on a computer, changing the settings. Yeah, I'd, I'd always had an interest in it. I'd always loved taking photographs, mainly of um, my cats and my dog, to be honest, because they were the only people that would sit still for yeah, me. and they don't complain yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, they kind of just do what they're told. Obviously, doing the modelling, I'd, I had an interest in it, and I'd picked up a lot of sort of information mm. along the way. Got a lot of very, very good photographer friends that I've met over the years, and we've stayed really, really close. Um, so I'd always, always had an interest in it, and it wasn't until I got a second-hand camera, um, I started sort of messing around with it a little bit, but mm -hmm. working full-time, I just didn't really have the time. My spare time was sort of dedicated to shoot myself. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was during the pandemic when I had all these hours on my hands and I'm sort of stuck in the house. I thought, perfect opportunity. And since then, I have used my camera a lot more in person, but that sort of gave me the boost I needed, I think, to sort of go on my way. Because obviously you've been on both sides of the camera. What was your first reaction when obviously suddenly the modelling, you couldn't do that job anymore? Did you, Was it something you were like, oh, this is a good time now to maybe look into the photography? Or was it just, like you say, you joined one of the Facebook groups and 
that you got the bug that way. Yeah, it was really, it was hard. I mean, I, it, it was hard at first not being able to do it because I didn't have the setup for home to model mm-hmm. remotely. And I really, I had this sort of creative, I've got this energy that everybody knows about. I'm quite a hyperactive person. And I just had this energy in me that I need to do something creative with. But I was so stuck. You're stuck inside your four walls. Mm-hmm. Four walls. There's not an awful lot that you could do. So, yeah, I was sort of constantly on the photography groups. I was on Purple Paw. I'm thinking, what what can I do? Um, yes, that's that's what sort of pushed me to pick, mm-hmm. to pick up the camera and to do it. Yeah, and I think the pandemic, it really did push me in that direction. Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. Okay, so you've, you say you've shot with a few models around the world. Is there any people you haven't shot with that you'd like to? So maybe if they hear the episode, they might get in contact with you? There's a few on my list that slipped through the net because of work when I was... Um, obviously, I've, I've been made redundant since then and I'm back full-time modelling, mm-hmm. but there was a few that slipped through the net that we had to rearrange for different reasons. Um, one, definitely, I want to shoot is Ayla. Definitely yeah. want to shoot Ayla. Another one I really wanted to shoot is Nicole Rayner. Um, and I'm lucky enough so I'm going to be modelling with her. We're going to be doing a little tour next year, which is going to be amazing. <laughs> so hopefully I can shoot her before then. They're definitely, definitely on my bucket list. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of girls over in America I'd like to work with as well. Um, it's just the time difference. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and obviously sort of, you know, there's a lot of things you've got to take into consideration. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's definitely a few on my list that I haven't, I haven't shot yet that I'd like to. Okay, as a photographer, because you're on the other side of the camera this time now, do you look at a, a model's camera setup and think, does that play into, like, you working with them? Or do you just think, okay, whatever camera they've got, I, I want to work with them because I know I'm going to be able to take images and then edit them myself? Not at all. I always was one of these girls that was like, I have to have that camera. I need this camera in my life. Yeah. What I've learned through remote photography, looking at my images the camera doesn't make a massive amount of difference. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until I put everything into Lightroom side by side and compared the quality of the images and realised it's how you take the image and what yeah. you do with it. The camera does help and the lens does help, yeah. but it's the eye, it's the creative eye, it's the angle, it, mm-hmm. it's what you do with it. And no, no particular shoot I've done, the images before processing are particularly better than the other because of the camera. Mm-hmm. And so I've learned it's not really about the camera, it's about the person taking the pictures and the person that's modelling. And obviously, again, because you've been a model, do you realise the model at the other end now has to do a majority of the work, like sometimes move the lens, move the camera, change the light and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I've realised how much work actually goes into it. Mm -hmm. I can see it from both sides because obviously as a photographer, on the remote shoots, you're directing constantly. So it's not like you sort of log on and it's completely done. The set will be there, but you've discussed mm-hmm. the set before. You've had to give your ideas what you want, mm-hmm. what you want with the styling, sort of the kind of um, base idea. It's not until though you log on and see that set in front of you, you sort of your brain has to start wearing really quickly to think, right, I want to shoot this from this way. I'd like it to look mm-hmm. this way. Um, so, yeah, it, it is quite difficult on both parts, but the models... Yeah, they work their socks off, the ones yeah. I work with. It's constant, sort of, whether it's getting changed, adjusting lights, adjusting mm. backgrounds, material, angles. It really doesn't stop. It looked like a lot of fun, though, and I really do wish, uh, wish I could have um, got set up in time to do it, but it just didn't happen, so I was happy to stay on the other yeah. side of the camera. But when did you first do it? Did you, was it during the first lockdown or did you come no, right no, to second. Second Yeah, lockdown. last year, yeah. yeah. Middle of last year I started, yeah. yeah. So it's been about a year you've been doing it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah about a year. And um, do you find um, the remote shooting can be limiting or do you find that because obviously the camera can't move around as much as if you were in person, do you find that gives you like more ideas to be like more bold than you would be in person? Yeah, definitely. Um I know I'm a very loud person, but when I'm shooting, I'm actually, I get quite anxious. I know we all get the butterflies. We all get the sort of photographer butterflies. I found doing the remote a lot calmer because you sort of, you can sit, you can look at it. Mm -hmm. You're sort of not moving around um, and getting distracted. So you're sort of sat, you're static really. And it's the scene that's moving in front of you. So 
You've got more time to direct it. I found I looked at it in more detail than maybe yeah. I would in person. It's in person, you've got a lot of distractions going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I took far less shots than I would on a normal in-person shoot because I was taking my time to sort of plan mm-hmm. each shot in detail. I wanted to get sort of quality over quantity yeah. on all of them. So I was really, really pleased with them all. Do you find that's going to move over to your in-person photography now? Because obviously you've looked around the frame more that you think when you're going to be taking pictures now, you're going to slow down and look, yeah. look at the image? Yeah, definitely. I've done a couple of in-person shoots with new models mm-hmm. since. And yeah, it's definitely changed my perspective on it. Again, like I've slowed right down with it. I'd rather get everything right before I take the picture yeah. than sort of... Like, I used to just try and wing it and just hope for the best, but now I try my best to get as many details correct in front of the camera first before I take the image. How do you present your ideas to a model? Do you, like, go through their Instagram, through the Facebook groups, um, or Purple Port, for, as an example of a model uh, website? Do you send, like, mood boards, or do you just, like, say, oh, I'd like to shoot you, what outfits do you have? I tended to go in with an idea of what I wanted for each one. So, yeah, and and then it was more like a discussion, you know, what have you got that Mm -hmm. we can use? For example, with Lucy, I knew straight away I wanted to do natural golden hour, morning light, beautiful art nude, because she excels at that. And we'd already discussed that. And the bath shot that we did, that's something. I knew she had the old bath in the garden. And Mm -hmm. I I had this idea in my head to do with um, a film that I absolutely love. I love Twin Peaks. And I love the movie, Fire Walk With Me, that came with it. And I really thought Lucy reminded me of the actress that played Laura Palmer. Okay, so I wanted, yeah, yeah. I wanted her in the bath in the water. Now, obviously, the, the film's quite um, <laughs> quite brutal. Yeah. But I just wanted a very gentle take on that, where she was in the water. So that's an idea that I'd had yeah. that we discussed. And they were oh my, they were able to do it, which was amazing. With, with Ivory, the mermaid, mermaid set, that's something... I'd seen her talk about and I thought, that's it. I'm, yeah. I love mermaids, I love unicorns. It's, it's either very simple for me or it's mm. all out totally sort of sparkly over the top fantasy. Yeah, so I'd sort of described what I wanted mm. and God, that girl can put a set together. I, I was literally going to say, because you, 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 you've, well. you've, you've talked about two examples where Lucy's obviously got New Zealand as a, a location she could shoot at because she can go yeah. up into the mountains and stuff, where Ivory literally has one room, but she can literally changes that room into, like, anything, and you would think she was in a studio because she her set design is, like, I think yeah. up, there, up there with people who do remotes. She, we went from being, like, in an underwater grotto to being in a sort of 18th century Renaissance fine art, yeah, yeah. sort of, um, like, a painting almost. It, yeah. it was it was really surreal, but amazing, and the, the speed that she can switch it around as yeah. well. So how do you go about looking for models who are doing remotes? Do you, like see their Instagram or do you go to their website or has it been mostly the Facebook groups where you've seen that they do remotes and it helps you focus on the models that are doing remotes? From modelling, I already have a list in my head of people that if I was photograph- if I, uh, doing photography, yeah. not photographing, <laughs> that I'd always like to work with. So I've always had this list in my head, you know, I'd love to shoot these people. Mm-hmm. Obviously doing the remotes, on, being on the remote group, I kind of had a really good idea of who was working actively, do, who was doing what. Yeah. And that really, really sort of helped me, uh, you know, to tick off my list, my mm-hmm. bucket list almost, I can call it. That sounds really cheesy, bucket list of models to work with. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that sort of really, really did help me with that. Yeah, and seeing sort of the sets and, and the examples work other people were producing, working yeah. with, with these people, yeah, that sort of cemented, you know, I definitely want to shoot her, I definitely want to shoot mm-hmm. her. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. It was just a case of planning it in, and obviously having the having the funds to do it, mm-hmm. and then off I went. So that's how how I worked really. Well, obviously now we're recording this in like um, August of 2021. Do you find remote shoots still being around? Because obviously pink things are starting to open up at least in the UK a little bit, where you can travel around a bit more. Do you find you're going to be still doing remotes? Maybe not with as ma- as many UK models, but maybe the ones overseas. To be perfectly honest, now sort of the pan well, I won't say the pandemic's over, but the lockdown is yeah. is phenomenal here. I have been really flat out with my modelling work. Um yeah. I was made redundant a couple of about two months ago. Yeah. Um 
So, yeah, modelling has just took off again now that I can travel. Mm -hmm. And I haven't really had time. I still want to shoot a couple of the girls over in the States, definitely. Yeah. But, yeah, I think now I've got sort of the, all these shoots under my belt, I would like to shoot people in person. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm, con I'm concentrating on. The remote thing, yeah, there's a couple of people that, you know, I can't get to yeah. around the UK. Um, so, yeah, obviously I'd love to do that. But... Mm -hmm. At the moment, it's just time and time management and mm -hmm. my busy life with the four children and umpteen pets. <laughs> I'm touring once a month too. It's yeah. uh, pretty full on. So, yeah, as and when, if, there, if the time and the opportunity comes up, I'll definitely do it. But I just can't prioritise it right now. So thanks for doing the podcast. Is there any, like, a model websites or stuff that people can find you on or Instagram? Uh, you can find me over on Purpleport. So I'm Everly Rose Model. And I am Tamriel Knight, which is T-A-M-R-I-E-L, Knight Photography. I also have an events page on there, Tamriel Knight's Events, where I organise events. And you can also find me on Instagram as Tamriel Knights. There's just the one Instagram page. I am in the process of setting up a website, but it's a work in progress. So, yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that one. So thanks for the podcast. Thanks for interviewing me and giving me the opportunity to tell my little story. Bye. <laughs> is that it <laughs> uh, I thought you were going to say bye but you just went and telling my story and then you just stopped uh, oh bye <laughs> it's fine it's, it's cool you should leave that in I, I, I think I will yeah Hi, Everly. Thanks for doing the podcast. Um, if you could give a brief history of your time in... Oh, see, I've cocked that up now. Right? Let's go again. <laughs> so, hey. oh, whoa, 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 easy. I thought, you, I thought you wanted me to say it. I'm so sorry. No, I'm, I'm going to do the, the question, then you can do the oh, answer. Okay. Yeah. I, I was just preparing you so you can like start thinking of the answer. So thanks for doing the podcast. Um, is there any websites or model... See, now I'm trying to... One, two, three. <laughs>